Hi, this is Natalie Lucier, and in this video, I'm going to answer the question, where should I host my membership site? So if you are using a tool like Access Ally or any other type of WordPress based membership plugin for your website, you might be wondering, should I put it on my existing website? Should I use a subdomain or maybe put it on an entirely different domain? So my recommendation is to use a subdomain on your main website. So what that means is it it is an entirely different install of WordPress and usually it looks something like this members.yoursite.com or access.yoursite.com whatever you want to name it is totally fine it could be the name of your course it could be the name of your membership and the idea here is that it is a separate installation of WordPress so you will have a different set of plugins, a different set of themes and different content and members. And that is where having a subdomain really shines. You can absolutely do this on a separate domain. So if you wanted to buy another domain like your site, course.com or something like that. You can absolutely do it that way too. It's a very similar process to set up. The only reason I recommend a subdomain instead of a separate domain is just for ease and just to make it a little bit easier for your members to remember or to be able to find your membership site. So I wanted to cover some of the common myths that come with creating a subdomain for your course or your membership. So here goes. So the first one is that if you are using a subdomain, you are not going to get any search engine optimization benefits. And here's my answer to that. So most of the content inside of your members area or inside of your courses is going to be protected content that cannot be searched or seen from the search engines anyway. So there's really no benefit to combining all of your content for your courses and your programs on your main website from an SEO perspective. So that is not a reason to try to do everything on your main website. Now, the other reason that people tend to want to just put their membership site on their main website is because they think it'll save them some of the setup and some of the other stuff that's required when you are starting a new WordPress site for your subdomain. But here's where it can be tricky because if you put all of your content on your main website for your course and for your blog and all the other stuff you have going on, it becomes an organization nightmare. So you have a lot more users who are logging into your website and you also have a lot more content that can be both public and private. So from an organization standpoint, having a subdomain or a completely different domain for your WordPress site is really smart. It's really the way to go. It's going to save you a ton of ton of ton of time organizing and keeping everything straight. Now that also leads into site load speed. So if you have a subdomain or a separate domain for your WordPress membership site using Access Ally or any other tool, it will not affect the load speed if you have a lot of members logging into your website or if you have a lot of traffic on your main website, it's not going to affect your membership site. Now, this is really great, especially if you are doing like a free challenge or a free course inside of your members area where you might have a lot of traffic there. You don't want that to affect your other site and vice versa. So this is a great thing to think about long term for your business and your websites. Finally, we also have branding and really backing things up. So if you have a different look and feel that you want for your membership site versus your main website, it's much, much easier to do that when it's on a separate subdomain and separate WordPress install, because you can actually have different themes. So you could have one theme that has the name of your main website for your main website, and then a theme that has very similar look and feel, but the name of your course in the header and do other little tweaks like that, that make your membership site more effective. And then the same goes for backing up and making changes. So if you want to make changes to either the look and feel or the content or any of that stuff, you can do that without affecting your main website. And that is so important and so key to have that flexibility. Now, the other myth is that setting up a subdomain is complicated and don't worry, I'm going to walk you through how to do that. 
Now, the final thing I want to share before we go into the walkthrough of setting up a subdomain is that I want you to remember that once you do create your subdomain or your separate domain for your membership site, for your access ally site, you will want to link to your login page prominently from your main website. And that's kind of a pet peeve of mine where people create a course login page and a membership site area, but then it's really hard to find it and you have to look through your email for the login link. So I really recommend making it a part of your navigation or making it super prominent somewhere on your main website so that people don't get lost between your two websites. So now let's take a look at how to set up a subdomain for your host. So the most important thing to note is that I'm going to share with you some examples here, but every single hosting provider will have a slightly different way of setting up subdomains. So for example, for GoDaddy, what I would recommend is to search into Google how to set up subdomain GoDaddy. If you were on a different host, you would just type in how to set up subdomain with your host. So that is really important because the examples I'm going to show you are specific to the hosts I'm using. And so they might not apply for your particular situation. So the first example I want to show you is a cPanel option. So this is just a demo website, but basically you would go here under domains, choose subdomains, and then from here you would choose what you wanted your subdomain to be. So that is the name dot your domain.com. So for example, maybe it's members, maybe it's access. That would be whatever you wanted to be before your actual domain. And so all you have to do to create the subdomain is then click the create button. And then from there you would install WordPress in this new area on your website. Now, if you're using something like WP engine, which is what we use for our hosting provider, we would just click on add install, and then we would just choose again, the uh, installation name. So in this case, uh, you know, it could be uh, testing. <laughs> I was going to call it that. And then you can also do something slightly different because we already have that one and then create a new install. And once you create that install, it's going to automatically create that new WordPress installation. And then we can choose what subdomain we want it to be mapped to. Now, another example here is in DreamHost. So in DreamHost, you would go under domains and then choose manage domains. Then we're going to choose add hosting to a domain slash subdomain. So I'm going to click on that. And then you would choose the subdomain that you wanted, including the full domain. So maybe it's members.yourname.com. And that's going to go ahead and create that subdomain for you. So for example, um, I like to have it uh, leave it alone. <laughs> and, and then you can go ahead and everything else should be pretty much good to go. Um, also, I like to get the HTTPS from the start. So that's a really good thing if you are building a membership site to have that um, secure certificate so that you can have credit card information um, pass through, not stored on your website, but pass through your website. If you are doing any payments, it's really important to have that. And then you can go ahead and click fully host this domain. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and install WordPress. Now, if you are not sure how to install WordPress, again, just Google how to install WordPress. And then you can follow this tutorial from the WordPress website. And it's really awesome. There's a couple of different ways to do it. Usually your host will have a super simple one click install. So you don't actually have to follow the longer directions, but that's really all it takes to set up a brand new subdomain with WordPress. And from there, you can go ahead and install access ally, install a theme and start loading up your content into your brand new subdomain membership site.